Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Wonder Snatch. I know I said in my last video I was going to stop doing snatches or scratches, but this week I was just too inspired to let it go. And also some people have been commenting in the comments that they wanted to see my snatches or scratches. So I'm back for this week. And also because I was so inspired by this week's Drag Race 13 Beast Challenge where Utica's makeup was just really so nice, I wanted to try that. And also because she was using Tina Burner Colors, who we said goodbye to this week. And also we celebrate our first plus-size drag queen over at Drag Race UK for Lawrence Cheney. Alright, and if that's something you want to see, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for post notifications. Alright, you know you want to, let's get started. Alright, okay, so today I'm going to go for Utica's look. Okay, she's got this really, really nice oil slick tears, which I'm going to try. I think I'm going to do a bit of a... Lawrence Cheney kind of style, okay? I've been watching his makeup tutorials and basically what he does is he does his brows first and he moves downwards. So that sometimes works for me. Sometimes it's too enthusiastic about getting to the rest of my face, but I think if you do this stepwise way, it does tend to give you a little bit of a better result, okay? Especially you can con concentrate on your eyes. So that's what I'm going to try today. So I'm going to try to go for Utica's brows. I think Utica does have a bit of a trademark look, okay? The last time I did her face, okay, I went a little bit too big. So this time I'm going to try to keep things tighter, keep things smaller, okay? She has a very simple little tick up tick brow and then she likes to do these white highlights around the mouth. Last time I think I diffused the lip out too much. So this, this time I'm going to try to keep it tight. Might as well go with the wig cap. Put the wig cap on. Alright, so let's start with Drag Race UK this time. Um, Drag Race UK, the finale, it wasn't an, a, a very exciting episode. I think everyone kind of knew it was between Lawrence Cheney and Mimidi Bon Boulash. And although Ellie Diamond comes in no wins, she only lip synced once, okay, last week. And Taste, of course, lip synced four times. <laughs> so, you know, I don't think there was any chance that either of them would have won. And Bimini Bonboulash, I guess, you know, she has a really, really meteoric rise and her story is a kind of an underdog story that RuPaul's Drag Race really likes. But, you know, I think they really wanted to give Lawrence Cheney this WoW Presents TV show because I guess he'll be the best suited for that kind of prize, I guess. But, you know, Bimini Bonboulash is a winner in my eyes. Okay, so I'm just going to do the forehead first and then move down to the rest of the face. Warm up that forehead with my V21. And when they come in the last week's challenge, Ellie Diamond and Lauren Cheney make up for the fight they've been having the last two episodes. I think I don't think either of them wanted to, you know, leave the competition with that hanging in the air. Forehead tiny. And for the brows, okay, to get an angle right, I need to put on my face tapes. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my face tapes on to map out the brows. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to go for that look there. Okay, so don't go too crazy. Okay, yeah, so the rest of the episode is just basically building up towards Lawrence Cheney's win. Okay, and then with white, I'm gonna cover up the rest of the eye. I finish up this um, neuron, it's last legs. Okay, and what, what Yudika does here, she cuts the brow and goes all the way up the temple, covers the eye. Okay, so and they come in the next morning, they do this uh, UK Han bing bang bong kick line, slapping each other. That was the United King Dolls move, but I'm sure horror feels very left out. <laughs> and they're thrown right into the challenge, okay? And then they have to do a quick interview with Rue and Michelle, write their verse, and learn a choreography. So nothing really out of the ordinary. Okay, let's blend up this white. Looking around the workroom, you can see Bimidi's um, wig stands. And Bimidi has these really nice glitter finger waves, which were never used. <laughs> I was really looking forward to, to a look with those beautiful wigs, but you know, unfortunately we didn't get them. I'm gonna go in the rest of, of the lid with my Rumen Zero P. Louise. Okay, could you give me a nice white base? So they go for a Ruth interview, and here you actually realize how young Ellie Diamond is, right? Ellie Diamond actually, if you if you if you notice, all her references are all stuff that she learned off the TV, okay? And her makeup is very standard, inspired by Raven, obviously, that was brought up before. Um, and all her dance moves are all very mechanical and very rote, okay? She does this what they call the Ellie Diamond eight step, which is basically the windmill thing, okay? Which has been done by probably every drag queen, except me because I can't do it. <laughs> but you know, it's all very standard. She even does these voguing moves and it all looks very 
a little bit off, okay, because she doesn't have the history and the knowledge to actually present these dance moves, okay? So she has a lot of growing to do. She's only 21, so you know, in like five years' time, she, I'm sure she's gonna be amazing. Right now, all her silhouettes are all pre pretty standard also, so you know, I think she knows she's not gonna win, okay? But I think she has a bright future ahead of her. She also has a great story, okay? She came up from the chip shop and everything. So I want this angle of this liner to basically bring this back all the way. Going for that vanishing point there. Let's even those out a little bit. This is a little bit too much. Let's try to erase that. They start getting ready, okay? They all have pretty much standard faces and they, you know, talk about, about their first impressions of each other. Yeah, nothing really too out of the box here. Makeup-wise, Lawrence Cheney, this is really nice. Purple and grey brows. Otherwise, pretty standard. Ellie Diamond, very standard face, okay? Practicing her standard dance moves. All, as I say, very standard. Beverly looks great, okay? She... I think she I think she really really thinks she could win. Even like you know in the reveal when they were like uh, watching the winner, you could see her sitting in front looking like she was very very poised to win. I'm gonna go into the yellow to blend this out. Set this white here with the yellow. And taste of course looks stunning every single time. I still can't get over Tasis admission from one of the last episodes where she was saying that she never felt attractive, okay? And she always tried to retreat into drag and not address her personal life, okay? All from a very traumatic um, experience that she had when she was young. Okay, that was quite sad to hear. I mean, it's something I, I think a lot of us can relate to, okay? That we might have been taken advantage of when we were young and never been able to reconcile or ever have a normal sex life. I think that's a story that's more common than actually a lot of people care to admit. And try to blend that into the black. Oh no. Okay, I think we can go into the rest of the face. I'm just going to highlight down the nose. And go into the rest of my... And this way you can clean up the black here as well. They performed their final number to, to RuPaul's song and you know, I, I found the sound here really, really bad. They were so muffled and so out of sync. I could not even hear what they were singing. I had to listen to it several times and even go to watch it on YouTube and everything to try to catch the words. But you know, nothing really revolutionary and I didn't think it was a very exciting song. But they all look really good though. Um, I think um, taste looked great in this pink mullet. Pink mullet situation. I did them look really basic. And um, Bimini was, was of course very good. And she had all the really, really good dance moves. A little bit of a sloppy handstand, but you know, I really wish Bimini would have won. Of course, the best part is when all the other queens came on stage. I felt a bit emotional seeing all of them, especially Veronica Green. Tia Coffee comes out in a RuPaul outfit. <laughs> because she says, you know, remember she asked RuPaul whether she could borrow her team. Let's blend this out very, very carefully. Okay, we've got to try not to hit the black. That's the only problem with doing all this in creams first. We'll work around all this other colours. And that, I thought the makeup on the rest of the queens looked really good too. I like Ginny Lemon's makeup. She had this really asymmetrical lip, okay? She looked crazy, but she looks... I mean, that's perfect for um, Ginny Lemon. A Horace makeup was really nice. And I really liked um, Sister Sister's wig, okay? I think the Boulet brothers had um, wigs like this in their recent um, special. I would really tried styling that before, but it's so... I don't know, I, could, I can't get these finger waves right. Oh, and Estina Mandela looked also really good with all these white little baby hairs around. I thought that was quite, quite cute. The only problem with doing your face in so many different steps is that you really have to trust the process because you can look really off for a very long time, okay? And it's very hard to not mix all these colours, especially on your sponge. But it's coming together. Contour my nose. So Ellie Diamond is told that it's not her time. Okay, I think she was expecting that and she bows out gracefully. And then they would do a three-way lip sync. Okay, which was... Uh, I didn't really enjoy this lip sync either. It's Elton John. Lawrence Cheney does a comedic thing and wins. I'm just going to powder and clean up a little bit and I'll be right back to talk about Drag Race Season 13. So I've powdered and I went and intensified the colours a little bit more. Let's just go in and contour before I go in in my under eyes. Wet and Wild contour palette. Okay, Drag Race 13 this week. We're starting to, you know, whittle down the queen. So Denali just left. 
Okay, and now we're only left with seven queens. Simone has just won her third challenge and she's going to win her fourth this, this episode. So, you know, she's really, I think, the front runner. She's probably going to win, okay, unless Godmik takes it. I think it's really between those two. And Simone, of course, comes in and asks everyone, <laughs> are they still shocked they're still here? That's quite shady. And of course, then there's this little bit of a telegraphing for Tina Burner. Okay, it seems like Tina Burner is starting to, what they, as they say, circle the drain. She hasn't won any challenges and she hasn't been succeeding in the comedy challenges, although she's a self-proclaimed comedy queen. Do a really snatched look today. The mini challenge this week was a trivia challenge. Okay, I think everyone who's a super fan will know every single one of these answers, except Utica. Okay, Utica couldn't get who says BAM! <laughs> and I think just from that alone, I don't think she's going to win. Without being a super fan, you won't win. Most of the Drag Race winners have all been super fans of the show. For example, Bob the Drag Queen, Alaska. They have an encyclopedic knowledge of the show. The only winner who doesn't really care is Bianca. I've been listening to Bianca's podcast recently. And it does seem like Bianca doesn't really watch the show either. Okay, even after she's won. So that looks quite harsh. We'll snatch that down. Snatch that there, snatch that there. And it's going to the under eye. So in the under eye, Yurika's using red. Red smoked into black. Okay, I guess I'll just pack it on with this. Morphe E15. The, the maxi challenge this week was uh, to, they, have to, they have to make an advertisement for their own soda. This is in a pattern of other, other challenges from before, such as the um, soup can challenge on All Stars 3, and also the perfume challenge on season 5, which Alaska won. Pack on this heart on. These are really Tina Burner colors. I'm surprised they didn't mention it <laughs> on the show. Okay, using a little bit of crazy. Deep enough. I thought the maxi challenge, a lot of them were quite predictable about what they were going to do. Like Tina Burner, the housewife thing, it was all really, really predictable. So I guess that she really was dinged for that. Utica, of course, went all crazy. She did this whole thing about licking the can and even <laughs> sucking it out of the udder of a cow. And that actually looked pretty dirty. It looked, looked like a Sean Cody pawn <laughs> when she was suckling the, the cow while someone else was feeding the cow. Oh, and of course, um, Tina Burner said many times here, it's not Victoria who has a secret. Victoria's not the only one who has a secret. What's my secret? <laughs> brings it all the way up and all the way around. Simone is obviously a natural here. She was so funny and they did say that everything she says, everything that comes out of her mouth is like gold. It's like she's she's definitely going to be in the top two. Um, Gottmik, who was a little bit awkward, okay? I think she was also a bit messy and disorganized. I think she was in trouble here. She could have easily been in the bottom, but I think, you know, they didn't want to risk sending her home. And during the makeup session here, they have a, dis a little bit of a discussion about comedy queens and, you know, Tina Burner and Rosé hashing it out again. I think Rosé definitely had a bit of an upper hand here. Okay, it seems like Yurika has yellow blotches everywhere on her face. I'm not sure if I'm good enough to make that look as chic as her. I definitely don't look uh, anything like her at the moment. Let's just try and get this red and yellow stuff around my mouth. I'm going to use the darker red called Living My Best. It's going to go around my mouth really, really tight. Try not to go out too far. Candy Muse shows off her scars from being gay bashed when she was younger. That's quite hard to see, but I think people need to see it. There's a lot of violence amongst gay people that still needs to be addressed. And of course, I can't end this video without addressing all the anti-Asian violence that's been going on in America. It's really, really horrible, heartbreaking. The person who shot up these um, uh, people in Atlanta, okay, all the Asian people. And of course, it took like three whole days before people could even call this a hate crime. I, I really find it really sad, okay, in America that there's still so much racial violence going on, okay, and people try to pretend it doesn't exist. When I was there, when I was living in New York, I could definitely feel r racism against me, okay? A lot of times, I was trying to explain it away, like saying, oh, maybe I came across rude or came across um, unpleasant or something, and that's why people were so rude to me all the time. 
like this ar- ar- article that I saw, I have, st- I have to stop gaslighting myself because I don't think I was, you know, behaving any other way in, in America. But Americans really have this um, bias against the other, okay? And I really felt it when I lived in America. I didn't feel it as much when I was living in, in the UK. Okay, I'm going to release this. So really, you have to stop Asian hate, okay? And stop white terrorism. Okay, let's splotch that with some yellow. <laughs> look really not so right now trust the process thing is that Utica has a very heavy brow than I do so the shadows there kind of like meld this part together whereas I, I think I opened it up a bit too much here so I'm just going to try to add a little bit more black here to um, bring the brow down a little bit dry my nostrils Yeah, so I really wish America would sort itself out <laughs> soon. <laughs> probably not, okay? The anti-Asian violence has been going on for centuries. It's probably not going to stop in this lifetime. It's really, really so upsetting to see one of my favorite countries in the world devolve into this nonsense. Okay, um, okay, I still look nothing like Utica. I think Utica is using a bit of a purple blush. I use a little bit of a darker pur- purple and plum. This too close up that area there a little bit. Okay, I'm using Not My Journey and Stay True in the Jaclyn Hill palette. Okay, I've got my Asuva Beauty in Grease. I'm gonna use this to draw the squiggly lines coming up from there and also the oil slick coming down my tear duct. Even uh, Gottmik has this kind of a very nice brow. Yeah, so let's talk about the runway. So I love this runway, this beast challenge. They all these very um, cutesy beast beast looks, okay? I think Alyssa Edwards should get some royalties, okay? Last week they did Beast Enders for uh, UK. And now they have just chanted for Drag Race 13. It seems like very, very inspired by Alyssa Edwards. Okay, she even has some coming up from here. Okay, so Yurika does come out in this kind of a slinky, furry beast thing. On Instagram, she she does a Beauty and the Beast inspired photo shoot with a Lumiere candle, holding a Lumiere candle. That's quite. I thought that was quite clever. Shows she's supposed to be a drag version of the Disney's Beast. Uh, Candy Muse comes out in. I don't know what, okay, she, she obviously didn't, tr- I don't think she tried very hard for this challenge. She should have been in the bottom. I didn't think her, her advertisement was really good either, okay. I think it was just really Candy Muse just saying stuff, trying to cash in this VIP thing that she's done before, okay. And yeah, it was not very funny, but you know, it, they were really trying to telegraph it and trying to convince us that it was funny by having the judges praise her the whole time, which I think was not warranted. <laughs> I think I need to pop this off. Tina Burner comes out in this patchwork beast teddy bear thing, okay? This looks a lot like what Jan did with her with Buttons and Bows challenge. Not executed very well. The, the sleeves and the, the pants look very, very baggy, okay? Didn't look very fitted at all. And her makeup, yeah, I mean, it really shows, okay? When she tries to do a creative makeup to go with this look, it just falls flat. She looked okay, okay, in the, in the workroom, but once she came on stage, you could tell that it was not the best of looks. This, this is going to be a very wonder snatch version of Utica's look. So she also has this really nice white oil slick there. I'm going to have put, put in my lenses later. I can't see when I put in those white lenses. Gone in the white under eye. I'm just going to use my clown white light to open up the inner corner. At the same time, she does this bit of a white oil slick here. You see, you want to go in with the lights first before I go into the darks, preferably. Okay, and then using my white Suva Beauty, extend this down. Teardrop of some sort. Okay, and now I go in with the black Suva Beauty um, as an oil slick to go around the inner corner and onto my face there. And then she has one on this side where it goes down the cheek onto her clavicle. She kind of draws it such that it's a 
globule here. So after Tina Burner is Olivia Lux. Olivia Lux comes in this very teal colour. She obviously used the teal colour in the Makeup Forever Flash palette. She looked really good, okay? Really pretty her face, okay? And a very nice teal outfit as well. So um, yeah, I think she. Th this was a real snatch for me. Simone comes out in this fox furry kind of look. Really, really hot kind of a foxy lady. Foxy brown as they say. She even has two big hoop earrings up there. <laughs> Looks very, very cool, okay? I wonder whether she'll ever be able to use this outfit ever again. Okay, I'm gonna go in with the, the details later. Let's just finish up the lips. Just gonna go in with a red lip and then some white highlights. Okay, I'm gonna use my Drag Cosmetics in Fire Engine Red. Haven't used this one before. Got Mick comes out in a very, very nice uh, Marco Marco uh, monster thing. I think Kamara Hall has a, has a, had a similar outfit planned. So good thing there wasn't a snatchy snap this time also. And Rosé comes out in this big red thing. I think Rosé actually looked pretty good in this. Her hair was amazing. I couldn't stop looking at the hair, the way it swirled up, okay, along the sides. That was a really, really nice wig. Yeah, and, and the Eliminated Queens, those that have posted their looks look really good. Denali has this very, very octopusy kind of a look. Didn't look very cohesive or anything. I think if, if I did this challenge, I would have d done something like this. I would have done something like my Cthulhu look, right? Uh, like this, I do a very flesh-coloured octopus with lots of tentacles, with a big tentacle mermaid gown going up with uh, maybe the tentacles coming up along the side. Something like a flesh-coloured Ursula, maybe. That, I think that would be quite that would be quite gross and quite nice. Now I'm going to go into my white again. She does a lot of these white highlights around her mouth. She did the same for um, Simone in the Makeover Challenge. I think it's a quite an interesting technique. And also she goes in and does these kind of like reflections on the oil slick. After it dries, you can put the white dot there. To make it look like it's, you know, dripping down your face. It's really cool. Oh, and Michelle Visage's makeup here was really good too. I like her pastel. Pastel makeup, okay? Usually this very pastel light makeup makes you look kind of like sunken in the face, but I thought it really worked really well for M Michelle in this episode. And and then there's a double win for both Simone and Ro Rosé. Well deserved. Okay, I think Godmick should have been in bottom two this week. She should have lip synced. Okay, I, I think she really did not do very well. Although I don't really like her style very much, uh, because it's too similar to mine, maybe. <laughs> I think maybe Tina Burner should have been given another chance. Okay, maybe it should have been Utica and Gottmik in the bottom, but I think these two are seen for the top. Utica's actually a really good lip sync artist, okay? I think she um, she really did a really good job with this, okay? She really embodies the song, and, and I think because of her quirkiness, she's able to give these songs really different meanings. So she looked like when she was doing the My Hump song, she looked like she was a split personality, like two different people singing to each other, the male part and the female part. And I thought that really worked. While Tina Burner was just jumping all around the stage, doing all sorts of funny, weird moves. That was that thing with the leg. Made no sense. Yudika won again, and of course, she always looks so happy whenever she wins a lip sync. <laughs> Doesn't, I think if she lip syncs again, she'll be going home. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm just going to throw on some white lenses, some lashes, I'm going to be back with the finished look. And this is the finished look, Utica Beast Challenge. <laughs> this is my um, Utica Beast Challenge. I made a headpiece, furry nails, and I found this black fur which I just had to use. Alright, so that's my snatch or scratch. I'm not going to do too many snatches or scratches in the near future, just whenever I feel very inspired. Alright, so don't forget, if you like this video, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for post notifications. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye. She fully padded for this look. Beast! Do you think Lawrence Cheney should have won Drag Race UK? Sign up in the comments below. <laughs> Check him 
my other videos. I did a top 10 off-screen dramas with Drag Race over there. And I did a St. Patrick's Day look with Melvin Singh there. Bye.